There's no transmission. All right, I'm here in, uh, at Henderson Transmission in Henderson, just south of Las Vegas. And they're working on the uh, excursion. As you know, on the last trip, transmission went out. So I flew back to Dallas, got the Dodge Monaco, drove it up. Now they're going to put this thing back together tomorrow and then I can drive it back to Dallas with the empty trailer, pick up more stuff. But rather than just having the transmission rebuilt, I wanted to have it beefed up a little bit. So let's look at what they did. All right. I, it's kind of hard for me to show you what they did, but they put in a transmission cooler that is much larger than the original. Let me show you the original. Okay. This scrawny thing is the original factory transmission cooler. I mean, it's only this tall, right? It's only like, you know, like what, six inches tall. The one that we're putting in, uh, I mean, this thing's a third, a quarter of the size that we put in. It's a Mishimoto, I think he said. It's literally the size of the entire like radiator. So this one has a, a extended steel pan with these air-cooled holes where air can run through there and physically easily cool uh, the actual pan and fluid. We're going to be able to hold over two gallons more transmission fluid in this rebuilt transmission. The original pan is, is, you know, cast and it's maybe a third the size, not even half the size. So this is going to increase the capacity, the cooling capacity, which is going to come in really handy. Now that we're rolling into the summer months here in Vegas, let me tell you, right now it's really nice. I'm standing, I mean, this guy's shop is nice and cool. As long as you're in the shade, it's all right. But the lack of humidity going through Arizona and into Nevada, it gets hot. So you need to be able to super cool your vehicle, especially when you're towing 10,000 pounds up a hill. And everybody's been telling me, I need to get this move done before the summer hits because when it gets super hot, it's not even hot yet. It's not even hot yet. When the hot gets here, trying to tow up a mountain, it's gonna suck. It's gonna suck a lot. How much does it cost to me? $4,300, that's what it's cost to me. But hey, listen, I know it sounds like a lot of money and people keep telling me that I keep throwing money into this truck, but think about it. I only bought this thing for 15 grand and it's got a 7.3 in it. When this thing came out in 2003, it was $47,000 new sticker, right? If I wanted to buy a comparable truck now, I would be spending 60 to $80,000. So if all I got to do is throw 5,000 out here and there once in a while, I put some new wheels on it, some tires, a transmission, a cooler here or there, did some suspension, I changed the rear end, blah, 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 blah. But even then, even if I paid double what I paid for the truck and I've got 25 or 30,000 into it, you still couldn't buy a comparable truck for that kind of money. That's a four by four excursion. I heard they're gonna bring the excursion back and it's probably gonna be in the $100,000 range. Being that most diesel trucks of that size are in that kind of price range, I think that we're gonna see a sticker price of that thing of 65 to 75,000 bucks. What do you think? Post down in the comments what you know about the new excursion. I've been driving the cop car. I love this piece of shit. I really do. It's got no license plates. I don't even care. Nobody messes with this car. Like, what are they gonna do to it? Scratch it? They're gonna dent the door? Who cares? <laughs> it's a piece of shit. But you know what? It's a great car. Ooh, it is ice cold in here. It is ice cold in here. It's busted ass radio. <laughs> okay, next day we're picking up the truck. I'm under the truck. And he's gonna tell me about some of the things he did to the truck. Wow. What's this thing? So this is a cooler bypass. This is what Ford came up with and what they thought of was in case the cooler gets plugged up, that this ball will compress. There's a spring and a ball in here and it'll bypass the cooler. In my opinion, that's a bad idea. If you've got enough contaminants in there to plug up the cooler, you've got bigger problems than that. So I want maximum flow through the cooler all the time. So what we do is we machine these aluminum spacers right here. Okay, I and see. And it bypasses this out in the cooler. The oil has to flow through the cooler no matter what. Yeah. So we did that. Plus you got airflow just going as a backup. Through, yeah, through these fans, cooling the flow. And the and you were telling me about how this pan is metal rather than cast, cast, so that if you do whack it, it'll just bend yeah. it rather than crack it. Crack it. And you got a bung for a sensor if you ever want to add that later on. Yeah. A bung. <laughs> and then, like I said, we got the, the, the six liter Michimoto cooler up front. Yeah, it's it's huge. I don't think you can actually you see, see it, it but it's the right size now. of the radiator. 
pretty much. Which, uh, just checking out. I just noticed coal used. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Lug nuts, Lug nuts. <laughs> to hold this bracket off. I mean, they work. It just cracks me up. Oh, that dude's a pisser. <laughs> we had to, look at this, we had to weld this. This is a common thing with these excursions. This little cross member here, we'll just snap off and drag the ground and my buddy Cross Street welded it. Looks pretty good under here. It's not all rusty, uh, bushings look good. Probably need to go in and gre do some grease on these fittings and things. But, um, and then up top, the, the shifter bolts, yeah. that bolt the shifter to the console, we're coming out. Oh. We tighten those up. Nice. And I adjusted your indicator, so now the indicator reads correctly. Oh, well, cool. Yeah, that's a common problem with the Fords. I think anybody who has one of these knows that um, your shifter can not shift. That's a pretty common problem with a lot of the uh, Fords. Omar's uh, truck that he has, he has a, basically the same F-250 and the, the shifter gets a little unshifty. All right, truck is back. Seems to be working. All right. Uh, that cost me 4,300 bucks. Damn it. It's a lot of bread, but I now have a truck with a new transmission that's good for hundreds of thousands of miles. It's probably going to outlive this truck, whatever, you know, this, what do I got? 250,000 miles on this, uh, 7.3 liter. So I think it's going to last. Quite frankly, I'm ready to just load this son bitch up and head right back to Dallas. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Skipping ahead a couple of days. For those of you who follow uh, my live streams that have your notifications turned on, you know that I already drove back uh, from Vegas to Dallas, got the truck fixed, got the new transmission as showed earlier in this video. I was just going to share this with you. I do like McDonald's, believe it or not. I know I shouldn't eat this shit, this crap, but did you know it used to come in a styrofoam container too, it was awesome. You can order the Big Mac with quarter pound patties. Just ask for it, it's a special request. Kind of a secret menu item. And I always get it without lettuce, all right? So there it is. This is the Big Mac with the quarter pounder patties which are much larger than the regular ones. And I get it without the lettuce. And that's what a Big Mac used to look like. Big Macs used to be big. And they didn't give me any damn napkins. Son of a bitch. Anyway. Uh, so next time you go to McDonald's, order it with the quarter pounder patties. There you go. That's a hamburger. You know, people talk trash about McDonald's, but there's a reason why they're like the number one fast food restaurant in the world. I like the Big Mac, it's good. all beef patty special sauce lettuce cheese pickles onions on a sesame seed bun it's good i like it i'm gonna eat this damn thing oh i know hi 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 Meow. how are you how are you yes the puka bear. This is my little bangle puka. He has his own Facebook page. Puka the bangle. Wow. Well, hi. How are you? You miss daddy on his long road trips? Wow. You do? You do? He's so adorable. He's a bangle. Wow. Which means he's a, he's a little leopard. He's a little leopard. He's a little leopard. <laughs> my little Bubba. He's my little Bubba. You're my little Bubba. Mm. See the 
soft, mushy side of Bob. He's my little Bubba. I need to trim your nails. Yes, I do. You don't want me to do that, do you? Wow. No, you don't like that, no. <laughs> it's like, no, not the nails. You are so cute and soft. The Bengals are the softest kitties you've ever seen in your life. Oh, Daddy loves you. Daddy loves you. He likes to just sit up in his tree and chill. Wow. Mm-hmm. Are you chilling? Wow. Are you excited to move to Vegas? Are you excited? You are? You're gonna be doing the exact same thing in Vegas. My wife was worried about uh, the cat. She's like, you know, I wonder if he's gonna adapt. I go, look, he just sleeps all day. He's gonna be in a big purple room in his bed, sleeping. I think he'll adapt just fine. You'll be fine, you'll be fine. Yes, you will, you'll be just fine. I think you're gonna be just fine. Love you. Wow. In the shop again. I just can't believe it's in the shop again. This gosh darn rolls. Can never keep the check engine light off. And I just can't believe it's in the shop again. Getting the injectors done. And here are the gaskets. Rolls Royce wanted $800 for these gaskets. BMW was 200 and something, but here they are. So we gotta get the intake back in, the injector rails put together, and back on the road. Here's the intake off this thing. So you get 12 cylinders. And, uh, well, 12 cylinders, 12 injectors, 12 gaskets. <laughs> you've ever wanted to see. Now this is the uh, same motor they put in the BMW 760 Li series. The difference with the intake on this is it's just a little bit more baffled. Uh, they do everything they can to keep this thing as quiet as possible. But it's nice, it's not too big a motor, but it's a pretty big engine. It's not just about the power and the torque, it's really about keeping it quiet. So we're back here at my buddy Christian's shop. You know, he runs this bus repair shop and I, I mentioned this in my live video that I did if you want a job for life learn how to work on diesels because if you can fix a bus a truck a commercial vehicle or one of these you will have a job for life now you're gonna have to work for a living you're gonna be greasy but this dude he makes money he lives himself a pretty good life trust me dude makes money Here's my fuel rails. So the injectors, they attach to here. They drop down into the intake and it all just bolts together. Um, and then the mechanical fuel pumps, they mount uh, to the side of the motor. And um, wow, I guess, I guess they mount over here. Where do they go? I don't know where all this stuff is. goes. Pretty interesting. We got the, we got the fajita, fajita making going on over there. What's this wine you got? Tell me about the wine. The wine, it's um, one plus. That's what it's called. You said it was like 400 bucks. That's 400 bucks. It was like 369 or something? Yeah. You see the label. What's it called? One plus. One plus. You show me the receipt. You don't gotta show me the receipt. But this is the funny part. Right? You bought a four hundred dollar wine and then you put it in a red solo cup. <laughs> That's how you know your your street. Yeah, you know. Spend good stuff and Yeah, you're celebrating uh what are you celebrating? The bill that you're gonna charge me for this roll? <laughs> That's what it is. No, I believe you. Three hundred and ninety-four, four hundred bucks. There you go. Yeah, no bottle of wine. That's crazy. <laughs> My hands are greasy from eating. <laughs> they were shot, but not low, not too low. You know, 
Oh, you're, you're high class rolling with this Opus One, huh? Napa Valley, yeah. 2017. Hmm. Is this Cabernet? What is this? Baron Philippe de Rothschild. Working Penub in all the wrong places. Working Penub, too many faces. These guys are stuck. Oh, this band had to get their bus fixed, pull all their stuff out, getting the cases polished, getting ready for their next roll. Russia. So, this dude's got so many buses here. Jesus. <clears throat> yeah, man, you want to have a job for the rest of your life? <laughs> Learn how to be a diesel mechanic. He was telling me about this awesome place he's going to buy in Mexico. Dude makes bank. Because when you need somebody to work on these, you got to pay what you got to pay. Now, my other kitty, the shop cat, Shopcat also has her own Facebook page called uh, Bob's Prop Shop Shopcat. She's probably got about four or five thousand followers too. She's usually getting her. There's your butthole. <laughs> Come here, pumpkin. Come here. <laughs> it's cat butt. Wow. There you go. Say hi. She's about probably about ten years old now. Hi. How are you? She's like, yeah, whatever. She likes to take photos. How are you doing? You're drooling on me. Gosh darn. I'm trying to work. One of my clients sent me this bottle of liquor. That was nice. I'm trying to work, pumpkin. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to do computer stuff. I'm trying to do computer stuff. She likes the cuddles. She likes the cuddles. Subscribe to a video, Bob. <laughs>